looking live and listening to the sounds and looking at the sights here at the D Bark Coliseum, we'll call it for this evening as the Mohawk Mountaineers take on the Sioux College Cougars. Now the Lady Mountaineers, well, they got the job done in the last contest, and now it's time for the men's squad who are coming off the heels of a 99 to 82 win over Conestoga. The Mountaineers coming into today's contest sit at four and six in the OU OCAA West. And meanwhile, well, the bad luck just continues to go, I think, for Sioux College and their basketball program. The ladies 0-10 coming into the contest, and well, the men, a perfect record in the wrong way as well, sitting at 0-10, but trying to look for that elusive first win. And the Mountaineers, as I mentioned, coming off that 17-point victory on the road, and they're on the outside looking in at the playoff race. Lambton sits ahead of them at 7-7, seven and seven, as well as Redeemer at 8-5. and five. The stars for the Sioux, Jimmy Tai, as well as Andrew O'Brien, Jacob Lamontan, Aaron Bossio, and Stephen, Stephen Miller round out the starting five. For the other side, it's Matt Foster, as well as Milos Mladjan, and we got Aaron Case. Actually, it's gonna be Jordan Martin, Mayo Tom, and Aaron Case, and that is a strong start to the game, to say the least. So tipped out of bounds right in front of the scores table that had a bit of a jolt. And we're underway. So two weird possessions to get back to back. The tip off the inbound, and now misdirected pass. And then Jordan Martin, not remembering that, oh wait, the ball has to be handed off by the official before we can get this game really underway. So let's see, third time's the charm. We're good to go. Oh, Tong! In and out. His first shot of the contest. One of the key players in today's contest, to say the least, if you're Brian Jonker. Ty with the turnover, the 5-7 product of Etobicoke, Ontario in his first year of eligibility. Sheldon Goldberg leads this team at 12.2 points per game, and then Stephen Miller at 10 points. Opening basket goes to the Mountaineers. Full court man to man. Looking for the double. Good tip by Martin on the play. No look, Otong. Ty trying to size up Blanchard. I don't think that's going to work out favorably in any instant. Neither will that. Ty's got it. Pulls it back. Numbers not in his favor. That is, though. Deep three, Lamontagne. Six foot guard out, Hammer, Ontario, in his first year. Ball kicked into corner. A bunch of Nola passes. Foster, Martin, back to Foster, adjust mid-air, shot missed, ball tipped into the hands of the Cougars. Miller pushing the pace, into the tie, pocket right three, wing three, my apologies. Long rebounds to the hands of O'Brien. Lama tied, shot missed, on top. To Martin, side, Lodge on bodies, it's gotta be more aggressive. He's got at least four inches on every single defender for the Cougars. He's got to put that in emphatically. Foster's got it. One point lead so far for the Mountaineers. No foul on the play. It's a hustle on the other end. You can already see the body language. Aaron Brown screaming for a block on that play. He's not going to get it. Tom, the joystick to Mahjong. Pocket right corner, too strong. Foster the rebound. Foster up and under, and that's in. And one Matt Foster. Foster will head to the line for one. 
coming into the contest, started all 10 games for this team, averaging just under 11 points per game, shoots 59% from the free throw line, 38% from the field. Averages 3.2 rebounds a game as well. And folks, unless you're here in person right now, I mean, the size difference between these two teams, it's significant. Case up and in. Aaron Case with the scoop, the adjustment, and the layup, and he'll head back to the line for an and one opportunity right after Matt Foster does. So mini 5-0 run by the Mountaineers. Aaron Case, six foot forward out Brampton, Ontario. Started all seven games he's appeared in to this point. Started later because of an injury, averaging just a hair under 10 points a game. No look inside, sweet dish. O'Brien the beneficiary on that one. Martin, Foster, Case. Baseline, Otong, pocket left corner, so long. This could become a track meet very, very quickly. Pocket left corner trying to respond. Case got it. Numbers the other way. Harden stops on a dime. Sizing up as Manny Miller tried to find Mladjon. It's going to be ball for the Cougars. First substitution of the game. Kevon Clark, six foot three forward out. Toronto coming in. Jimmy Ty checks out. John Dolmage also checking in right now for the Mountaineers. High zone played right now by the Mountaineers and woo, La Montan with the basket. He's got a deep three. Ricky Morrison in the game as well. 13-8, Morrison with the offensive rebound. Nice little sidestep. You get a foul on Otong. So Kevin Clark, strong rebound. Otong, a little sneaky reach in. The body language right now, the Mountaineers don't look like they're taking this game completely seriously at this point. They're playing with house money, it feels like, here early on. Yes, they're bigger, they're faster, they're stronger. That is a dangerous situation to put yourself in if you think like that mentally throughout a game. That mentality is where upsets occur. Right now, a five-point lead. But we've seen it's been a little, not reckless offensively, but a little more free-flowing to say the least. Now the Mountaineers coming into this game actually played in a tournament at George Brown over the holidays. They went one and one in that tournament, losing in the semifinals to the host George Brown, who are in the top 10 in the country. And talking to Brian Jonker about what adjustments they made over the break? Well, he said it's about repetition, repetition, repetition. Not a broken record. He said that three times to me. I can confirm that. And starting the youngest squad in the league, well, that's what happens. There's a lot of growing pains, but there's also a lot of benefits you can see. As we mentioned, Emmanuel Tong, the team's leading scorer, averaging just under 25 points per game, shooting to 41% from the field and 34% from the land beyond, while averaging nine and a half points per game. Now, if you weren't paying attention during the female game or you didn't tune in, well, you'll see that a lot of the Mountaineers playoffs, a lot of the Mountaineers players, a lot of the players from Mohawk, well, they're wearing shirts that say, my mind matters, and that is part of a initiative set out right now as part of Mental Health Month here across the world. We see there's the Bell Let's Talk campaign. 
Well, Mohawk is getting themselves involved in that. And for the Sioux, well, that seven and a half hour drive, probably not as comfortable as you'd like to be when you're sporting an 0 and 10 record. Like the ladies, they are looking for their first win of the 2018-19 campaign. And for fifth year head coach Aaron Brown, it's been a trying time to say the least. Only one fifth year in the lineup, three seniors, the rest of the lineup all first years. So battle of the youngsters and a young, naive mistake by Aaron Case. Miscommunication with Morrison and a turnover. So five point lead here early on. Ball is gonna be swung. Miller's got it. And Brown yelling from the bench, someone's gotta be aggressive. Not in that way though. Morrison, Tong, gets the defense moving. Foster, straight away, got it. Foster from the land beyond. O'Brien, out to La Montage. Over to Okamah. Clark into the lane. Shot miss, hustle, Clark's got it again. Dump pass out to O'Brien. Again, O'Brien comes up, tries to save it into the hands of Morrison. Track me here at the D-bar. No luck. Foster. Too strong. Clark's got it. Lamontan. Cougar's trying to find something. Stalling a little bit here offensively. Nice block, Emmanuel Tong. Case has it. Stutter step. Pulls up. No luck. Otong. Looked away, right into the hands of Aaron Case. Clark ends up with it off the steal. Sasha Okuma, my apologies. Deep three on the right way, nothing but net. Miller from the land beyond. Six foot guard out of Toronto, first year product. Case, Morrison, Foster, around the world. Shot missed though, so O'Brien strong rebound. Miller versus Case. Had him a little star set, black headband. Nice little adjustment. Ooh, almost got it. Case into lane, tripped from behind. Had the inside position of Stephen Miller. And the Mountaineers will get the ball underneath the net. Bonus situation already. So we saw this happen in the ladies game where the Lady Mountaineers a little too aggressive early on. Gave plenty of time for the Cougars to head to the line. Key thing is they held themselves back defensively after that in terms of reaching in. They were not at 16 after one. Case in and out on the first. The Mountaineers coming into this game averaging 92 points per game, nearly only sporting a one and four record at home. They're better on the road right now than they have been in the, we would want to say the cozy confines of the debark, but it's been anything but that as they sport a three and two record on the road. Well, Matan's got it, it's gonna be doubled. Off the foot of Otong. Going to retain possession, a quick substitution. O'Brien's going to check in. Come on, it's going to check out. And for the Sioux, well, Mountaineers averaging nearly 90 points per game. The Cougars, 54. They shoot 30% from the field. And they've played more home games than road games at this point. But again, still looking for that first victory of the campaign. Yeah. 
you hear Brian Jonker there saying, they gotta move, ball's gotta move. And that's something he said was the key in this game. He said the offense, he wanted more continuity going on, he wanted more consistency, he wanted a little more ball movement instead of a little too much iso ball. O'Brien too strong. Otong, pull up. He's gonna skip it across the pond into the hands of Martin. He's gonna drive baseline. Sidestep try to find Dolmage on the inside. A block on the play on La Montan. So if you saw in the opening sequence of this game, the Mountaineers were sporting gold, what we'll call it our creamsicle color, and white track pant tearaways. Timeout on the floor. Called by Aaron Brown. So before the game, they were warming up in a pair of, they, they looked like circus pants. They're those classic tearaway pants. If you guys watch college basketball, they're like the Tennessee Volunteers. So orange stripe or mango stripe, whatever you want to call it, followed by a white stripe repetition, pinstripe style for their pants. Beautiful, look at our camera guys. That is great work by you guys. So the story behind that, I talked to Brian Jonker, I said, where do these things come from? I have to know the story behind that. Well, he said those pants that he ordered custom made are back from the last time Mohawk won the OCAA championship three years ago. So what do you do with those after? Well, he says they've been sitting in his garage since then, and he showed pictures to the guys on the team, and he said, well, the guys soaked it up. And he said, we had to bust them out for this game. Now, right now they're wearing the My Mind Matters t-shirts, but you'll see in the remaining home games for the rest of the year, they will be covered head to toe in those pinstripe mango and white tearaways. Just shout out to the camera guys again. Great job finding that, really giving people a picture of what that looks like. Jordan Martin heads to the line. Brampton product, third year. Hasn't seen a lot of action, only his second game of the year. And well, in that one and only game, 100% from the line, five points in that contest. Eight point lead for the Mountaineers. 2.30 left here in the first queue. Beautiful press break and finishing is Bosolio on the other end, the first year product of Sault Ste. Marie, six foot four forward. Dolmage on the other end, deep triple. And there's been a disconnection completely in the shot clock right now. So Aaron Bosolio with the deep three. A little technical malfunction here at the debark. There we go. Brian Jonker speaking it over with the head official Stephen Chow right now. Also calling the game Rick Heron and Jamie Snell bringing you through the men's action. Greg Campbell bringing you through the action here on your Friday evening. OCAA West Division men's basketball on M-Link Sports and Entertainment. Mountaineers looking to improve to five and six on the season. Martin with the strip to Mladjan. No, he wanted the dunk on that one, but he does settle for the layup. Shot clock still not working. So the game clock's working, shot clock's off. Deep three again, O'Brien. So the scores table calling for a second again. Shot clock not resetting very well. So should the shot clock not reset. What we would have here is something you see that's very rare, which is by an official's count. It's one of those things as an official you never think is gonna happen. Getting confirmation from the scores table, we are okay, crisis averted. So the Mountaineers, nine, 11 point lead. Emmanuel Otog a little frustrated right now. Can't get the shot clock or the game clock situation figured out. Jordan Martin, 5'10 guard, third year. 
making his second start of the season. His family sitting courtside right now on the far side. You can see him talking to them. Mom and dad in the crowd. Looks like little brother too. We're tong into the lane. He's gonna force the issue. He's gonna head to the line. So the team's leading score by a comfortable margin to say the least, averaging nearly 10 points per game more than everyone else. 24.7 to be exact. Shoots 41% from the line. From the field, 69% from the line. Also averages nine and a half rebounds a game and three assists, but also three turnovers. So 12 point lead under two minutes left here in the first. Ty's got it, he's gonna get doubled. Smart pass across the pod. Again, they break the press beautifully. And once again, Basio converts. Lajon the other way, he's gonna get Fouled on the trail end by O'Brien, who's beside himself with the call. So that full court press not really working too right well right now for the Mountaineers. He goes Mlajon heads to the line. 15 points per game. Shoots 73% from the line. 50% from the field and has nine and a half rebounds a game as well. Kanjo Masuka is the team's, le team's leading rebounder at 9.8 rebounds a game and third on the team in scoring at 14 points per game. He is not in this contest this evening. Second chance, no avail. Skip outlet, Otong, Euro step, ooh. Nifty little move. Mountaineers having their way here early and often. A 13 point lead. It's 112 left in the first. Afonso is going to check out. Okama is going to check back in. Emmanuel Otong. We talked about him playing like he has a joystick. We're seeing that here early on. Very loose in his play right now. Full court press by the Mountaineers. Playing basically a box and one full court press. Good convert. Kevin Clark fakes the pass, makes the basket. Brian, Brian Jonker said before the game, when I asked him the keys defensively, he said, we're going to mix it up constantly. We're going to give different looks consistently and often in this game. Maybe one they want to defer from is that full court press, the way at least it looks right now in that box one, because it's getting shredded by the Cougars. So one bright spot here in the first. A foul on the floor, Stephen Cho with the call. O'Brien is the one that's going to send Milos Mladjan back to the line. Team's second leading scorer. Mountaineers have five players in their starting lineup. And if we count Aaron Case, that averages 9.9 .9 points per game. Let's call it six players averaging double figures in their lineup. You look at the flip side, two for the Cougars. And their total between the two of them is less of that of Emmanuel Otong individual scoring. But for a team that averages only 54 a game, well, they're almost halfway there already. 22 in the first quarter, 31 for the Mountaineers. I'm predicting a 100 point game for this squad. You heard it here first. Greg Campbell bringing you through OCA men's basketball action here on your Friday evening. 
on M-Link Sports and Entertainment. Lajon, little too late on that one. Downward trajectory of the ball from the Cougars shot means shot cannot be altered at that point. So a basket for the Sioux. Last possession of the first. What a first quarter, 55 points between these two sides. Martin's got it. He's so gonna take the last shot. Three second difference, shot clock, game clock. One on the shot clock, way deep, whoa! Just walks around like it's a normal Sunday strut. Jordan Martin with the shot way beyond the three point arc to finish that first quarter and the Mountaineers lead by double digits. They lead 34-24. You see Martin with the no look. Little playground basketball with Emmanuel Otong. Case into the lane with a nice scoop in the end. One opportunity. And then Milos, you know he won that dunk. But he does the smart thing, goes off glass. And that D3, I mean, come on. A sensational first quarter for the Mountaineers. 34 points. We talked about before this game, a team that has not won a game yet in the Cougars. 24 points a game, average 54 on the season. The Mountaineers, they gotta be careful in their mentality. You saw them stiffen up later in that first quarter, tighten up defensively for the most part. Yes, it's 24 points, but they seem a little more focused now that the game is fully into it. Early on, not lackadaisical, very relaxed. Very relaxed on the front, like, like a quiet Friday evening. They're not going out anywhere. They just want to take those chill vibes kind of on the court. That's the kind of style we saw there. Very playground style, very free flowing. Again, nothing too, too structured. And to be honest, they've had nothing to worry about really to this point. And the size differential right now? Well, again, as I mentioned, it's kind of significant when you look at the lineup. I mean, they've got a couple of players over 6'1". They've got one guy who's not playing right now who is 6'8", a product of Hamilton, Ontario, James Scalco. But outside of that, not a lot of size on the court. And in a, in a weird way, this might be a bad analogy, but it's like, you know when you saw Space Jam and the little monsters beforehand, and then they grew super big once they touched the Magic Basketball? It seems like that sometimes on the court right now. Milos Majan touches ball, Emmanuel Otong. They've got a couple of good inches on every one of their defenders. So we have an issue right now with the score line as well as the game clock, which says 1.4 seconds. But we all know it's gonna be the second quarter shortly. Aaron, Bryan, Aaron Brown discussing with the officials right now. So it's been an issue here early on. The Dactronic system not working out too well here early on. We've had issues in the past with the scores table in terms of the shot clock. So worse we've seen it so far. One hundred and thirty-two. Whoa, there we go. So out of nowhere, on the big screen, the Mountaineers put up a hundred magically between the quarters. So they currently lead one thirty-two to twenty-four. They might hit that mark later on. You never know. Now one twenty. Oh, that's a pain. I feel bad for their scores table. Guys, if you don't know what's happening right now, they have to manually press down the entire time. You know that song, 99 Bottles of Beer on the Wall? Well, we've got 132 points on the board. And it's 66-24, and it still hasn't been adjusted. What a kerfuffle. This is the most interesting 
scores table situation we've ever had. One of the players actually for the Sioux said, let's just start over. Start 0-0, zero, zero. good idea, we'll, we'll start it over. It works that way. Oh. So it went from 134, they got it down to 33. And then immediately as soon as they hit it one more time, went right back up. I can't make this up, folks. I'm not making this up. And this is as prolonged a natural timeout as you're ever going to see here in OCA men's basketball action. So right now we got a little timeout on the floor. And I mean, what else could you ask for? You got to have some fun on your Friday night. Oh, it happened again. These poor guys, they can't catch a break. Leave the score at that. Let's just start there. You look at that score, 133. Side note, that's gonna be like an NBA score. I've seen the Warriors put up like 120 plus in their last seven contests. Played the Nuggets the other night. They put up like, what is it, 154? So you can see right now, it's at 132 to 24, and they're still trying to figure out, and head official Stephen Chow standing by the scores table, <laughs> trying to get something figured out. I, you can't make this up. You can't make this up. So right now, the Mountaineers, who sit at four and six on the year, looking to make it five and six, came off a win on their opening contest of the 2019 campaign. They defeated Conestoga, and now they're trying to make it to and roll. They're back in action actually tomorrow afternoon when the ladies and the men tip off at one and three, respectively, here at the d -Bart. The Lady Mountaineers pulled away with a victory late stages in the fourth quarter for their win. And now it's the male Mountaineers trying to do something on their end. But seems like we're going to have a full quarter of break here before we actually get back into the action. And they got it. Shout out to the scorers table. No one clapped for these guys. Do you know the effort these guys just had to put in to get this game running again? Folks, if they don't do their job properly, we're getting out the old flip score, the manual score. So everything is working and we are officially underway here in the second quarter. Thanks for sticking around during that. What is a head scratcher and a kerfuffle? And one of the more interesting moments I think we'll see in this 2018-19 campaign. Oh, Matt Foster, automatic from the three-point line tonight. Lead back up to 11. Tried to find it on the inside with Ty. Foster the other way, too strong, saves it. Mijan right there! Milos Mlajan. Emphatic dunk. And using all of that frame of his, all 6 9, to cram that home. Morrison to Martin. To Foster. To Case. Case, oh, they're begging him to shoot that. Morrison gets it, though. Back to Case. To Foster. Martin, Jogger telling them to move the ball. Case straight away, two on the shot clock. Morrison tips it around into the hands of Clark. Clark skips it over. Lamontan trying to look for a no-look pass back to Clark. Whoa, get that garbage out of here, says Milos. Ricky, Euro step. Woo, heat it up here on your Friday night. Lajon with the block, Morrison with the convert on the other end. Ty skips it over. Bustle. The tie. Gets Martin moving. Fade away. Woo. Tough little jumper on that play. Jimmy Ty. First basket of the contest. Shot 
Shot missed by Foster. Second chance opportunity. Case into lane. Bounce pass inside. And one. Milos scaling to the apex of the net on that. Met on the play by Clark. Foul. And the end one. Milos had four points after that first quarter. Otong with four. Jordan Martin with four. Foster with a team high six. Off a one of three from beyond the arc. Two of five from the field. On the other side, the lean scorer, Andrew O'Brien had five. Jacob Levanton led all Cougars with six. 36% shooting for the Cougars. Just hasn't been a strong suit for them all year. But a free-flowing game as the basket made on the play by Okama. The Timmins, Ontario product. Morrison gets tie moving, stripped on by Basio. Tie the other way. Jimmy. Tried to adjust midair. Milos with the rebound. Milos between the leg. Case, touch pass. Martin. Martin into the lane, coast to coast. Martin has eyes toward Foster in that pocket corner, makes the layup. 44 28. Ty's got it on the back. Ty, way too deep into the hands of Clark, who's weighing underneath. Case got it. Skip to Martin. Back across the pond to Foster. Beautiful ball movement by the Mountaineers. Martin, can he finish? Paints the picture beautifully. Around the world we go. Aaron Brown telling the scores table wants a timeout on the next opportunity. Clark's got it. Picked up his dribble to tie. Matched up with Barton. Takes the screen. Dribble into lane off that right hand. Kicks it to the corner. A little too strong for Okama. And a turnover and a timeout on the floor. So the Mountaineers up 19 points. 47-28 with 6.15 left here in the first. The male Mountaineers averaging just over 90 points per game. They're already at 47, and well, big reason is why, because of that man right there, Milos Mladja on the team's second lead scorer, averaging 15 points per game and nine and a half rebounds a game. But it's his size here early on that he literally has whatever he wants in the paint should they touch the ball on the inside. You see Brian Jocker with the hand motions right now. He's saying, what are you doing standing there? He wants ball movement from this team. He wants a defense on its heels. And while they've done a good job of that so far, and obviously the size is a huge difference maker right now for a squad, and hence why they're up 19. Mohawk. At this point this year, well, home hasn't been too kind to them, as we mentioned. One and four here at the d -Bark, looking to make it two and four and looking well on their way at this point in the contest, a comfortable lead. Their last win at Conestoga, 99 to 82. If you want to look for the last time they won at home, it was actually against Conestoga as well, way back on November the 9th. Their most recent home contest, a 93-85 loss to Redeemer back on Tuesday, December the 4th, and that was before the exam season, which kicked off the break and the holidays. Otong with the floater, too much on that. Clark to tie. Nice little bass pass to Basio. He's quietly having an excellent game to this point. Aaron Basio has four points plus another two there. Clark's going to force it. Who they got on the foul? They've got Martin on the backside on the reach. So Kevin Clark will head to the line. Substitution coming. Stephen Miller waiting. So, so they get him on the backside of that play. And Clark, not technically listed on the official OCA website in terms of scoring. So there's something. So no information. 
Nice little crowd jinx on the play by someone there. Affected the shot by Clark. Otong thought about getting his man moving, fell to the floor to Dolmage. Over to Case, back to Dolmage. Beautiful. The fluidity of this offense and the movement is brilliant right now by the Mountaineers. Yes, they're facing a team that's 0-10, but this is where they need to instill those kind of fundamental skills. Clark goes up against two, shot altered into the hands of Case. Skip to Martin. Look for the lob, they cut that off completely, and Martin says, okay, I'll just take the layup. A 23-point lead, 54-31, make that 54-33. Strong take by Ty. Morrison, Martin, to Case. Go, Tom. So long. Emmanuel Otong, the left wing three, and the lead back to 24. Now, knock on wood here, no problems with the shot clock. Oh! Otong with the block. Is he going to be the beneficiary on the other end? Well, Superman dives into the backcourt there, the end line. You can tell the Mountaineers are looking for that emphatic dunk or lob at this point. The hustle has not slowed down at any point. 4.08 left in the first half. The football pass. The vertical is red on the play. They convert, tie. A fadeaway a little too strong. Case, four on two. Four on three, make that. Morrison pulls up on the right wing. Totong, too strong, tipped by Case, and it's gonna be Cougar possession. Substitution coming for the Cougars. Aaron Basio coming in. Basio has had a strong game to this point. Couple of nice jumpers. Ty's wide open on this play. I'm not sure why they can't find him. Get bailed out by the reach. Jimmy Ty was wide open on that. And the Mountaineers content to go sit back in that 2-3 zone. A very high 2-3 zone. So they got to be careful of the back door. They're going to hedge their bets right now. Ball moved around. Good job. Clark with the convert. Off the pass of his teammate in Okama. Case. Makes his case. Dolmage and Foster with the double block there. Morrison in transition. Morrison scoop, partially blocked by Clark. Finds Otong. Touch pass in. Over to Morrison. There's an our jumper. The Mohawk Mountaineers at 62 points. With three minutes left here in the first half. A 27 point lead. Zone very, very high. They're looking for the double at some point. Tie. Good job sneaking in behind the defense, makes it rain. Jimmy Ty, oh my. Sneakily smart. Seeing how aggressive that Mountaineers defense is, makes him pay. Otong with the rebound. That length, Emmanuel Otong. Barely had to get off the floor to get that jumper. Oh, come on. Touch pass inside. Clark, and again, Dolmage cheating with his eyes and his body up front. And Okama makes him look the other way. Foster, big rebound. Tried to go in between the legs back to Dolmage. Substitution coming. The big man in Milos Mahjong coming in, checking in for Ricky Morrison. Brian Jockner's team, a comfortable 64-40 lead. Pocket, left corner, got it. 
Foster building a home shot by shot here in the D-bar. Foster almost blocked that one too. Dolmage spot up three, right by Foster, in and out. Strong re rebound by Lamontana into the hands of Dolmage, unfortunately. Foster. Woo! Aaron Case called that in the corner before I could even say any three. Matt Foster, it's not raining outside, folks, but it is here in the D-bar. Pretty little move on the other end, though. Case tried that full stretch outlet pass, tipped by Cougar. The Mountaineers average just over 90 points per game, folks. Just over 90. They're at 70 in the first quarter. We joked about during that prolonged timeout. They averaged, to be exact, 91.8 points per game. Joked about during that brief intermission there. How to leave the score at 132. They very well could be on their way to that. Especially with the way this offense is moving. Just too strong, too much size on the play by Milos. Otong almost had the crowd on its feet. Miller's got it. Left wing three, too strong, Milos has the rebound. 13 second difference, shot clock, game clock. No look to Otong, pull up jumper, shot missed. So substitution coming for the Cougars. James Scalco is gonna check in. 6-8 forward out of Hamilton, Ontario. As the big man in their lineup. Milos, just body Scalco. Still wins that battle though. Case has it. Looks like it over and back. Last, we've got a six second different shot clock, game clock, Foster misses. Bossio rebound over to Okuma. Miller, Okuma, three on the shot clock. Trying to go no look inside, a foul before the end of the half. So a foul before the end of the half there on the play, the officials conferring on what is going on. So they're calling a foul right now. It's James Calco, who just checked into the game, gets called for the foul. So they're going to put 0.5 seconds back on the clock. Theoretically, you really want to do something. They could hoist a full court prayer. They're just going to inbound this one, though. So that's the end of one half here at the D bar. The Cougars down 28. Milos, this first dunk of the contest, his only dunk so far. You know he's looking for more. And Matt Foster has had one heck of a first half. Milos says, get that garbage out of here. And same with Emmanuel Otong. But after one half, the Mountaineers winning big on the scoreboard. 70 to 42. We'll be back with second half action here on Emling Sports and Entertainment. Welcome back inside the D Bar here on your Friday evening and the highest first scoring half of the season for the Mountaineers in what seems like a pickup game of basketball here at the d bar 70 to 42, the Mountaineers lead heading into the third quarter. Mohawk coming into this game, four and six on the year. Meanwhile, for the Cougars, they were looking for the first victory of the 2018-19 campaign. Now we've had a little bit of everything in this game. We've had some high scoring, not as many dunks, we've had a lot of transition offense. 
and well, we had about a 10 minute delay due to the score clock. The scoreboard specifically and the shot clock not working. And well, that is a story we'll save for another time. But we're underway here at the D-Bar third quarter. Greg Campbell bringing you through OCA AA men's basketball action here on your Friday evening. Martin gets the third quarter started off in style. So Mountaineers high scoring first half and what a shooting performance so far. Three Mountaineers in double figures. Matt Foster leading the way, four three balls, 15 points, three assists. Manuel Tong, 33% from the field, 13 points. And Jordan Martin, 14 points, make that 16 off his last layup to start the third. You know, Tong with the putback! That's what we're looking for. The Mountaineers shooting 52% in the first half, 11 of 24 from the land beyond, 16 assists as a team. On the flip side, Jimmy Ty is 5 of 10 from the field for 11 points and two rebounds. And then Jacob Lamontan, six points off a two of seven shooting performance. And Kevin Clark, three of eight for seven points and nine rebounds. He's been a steady force in this game. Martin with the strip. Martin sizing up tight. Nice little Euro step scoop with the right hand. Mountaineers flying here early on in the third quarter. Turnover. Cougars. Oh, Tong! Oh, they're looking for that set up. Foster into the lane. Milos with a tip over to Martin. Back to Case, inside the paint, tipped by Basio. Off his hand last. Oh, Kevin Ho's gonna hand off the ball, Cho. He loves Blajon, will head to the line. Did I say Kevin Cho? It's Steven Chow. My apologies. Looking at the wrong sheet here. A lot of stats, a lot of information after a high scoring first half. Mountaineers averaging just under 92 points per game. They're already at 77. The Sioux, they're averaging just over 50 points per game and they're almost there and we're only at 820 in the third quarter folks see what the total ends up being if you're a betting man the over under well you're way over right now Milos loses the ball Miller the other way two on three forces the issue through tried to slip it between Martin and Case off case last. Kevin Chow's gonna hand the ball off to Miller. They're gonna find Basio. A little too strong. Basio, three of four from the field, six points in the first half. Otong, nice little adjustment. Every time Emmanuel Otong is going to the net, he's looking to posterize his next victim. Will he get that signature moment? That remains to be seen. I'm on Tom with a deep three. That's his third of the contest. He's good for nine right now. Case to Foster. Inside. Ty off the turnover. Jimmy Ty, team high 11 after one half of play. Nice little move by Fat Foster. Foster, four three balls in the first half. Andrew O'Brien by the scores table, waiting to check in. Cross the pond, Martin gets his man moving. Stutter step into the lane with the left hand and in. 
just having their will and their way right now. 39 point lead, tie, cuts into the deficit. Saw that in the first half, Jimmy Ty's second three pointer his, of the contest. Couple long looking shots. Milos again in the paint, the size, the difference. The Mountaineers towering over the Cougars. Ty's gonna try to stop the bleeding. He's gonna head to the line. O'Brien's gonna check in. Couple of substitutions for the Mountaineers. Morrison's in. Dalmage is in. And Liam Hindle, haven't called his name yet from my recollection this year. 5'8 guard out of Westdale in his first year of eligibility. His teammates abandoned him on this one. In and out of the toilet bowl on that one. And that is kind of a summary of what's happened so far for these Cougars. A dejected feeling. Just getting outclassed, outmuscled right now by the Mountaineers. Morrison on the left wing. Foster gets the rebound, dumps it underneath the case. Case muscles his way through three, almost gets a reverse. They push foul on the Mountaineers. Mohawk looking to crack the 100 point barrier here in the third quarter. I've never been witness to a game of this scoring magnitude for both sides. Pretty reverse layup on that play. The Cougs aren't backing away by any means. Hindle of the case to drive baseline. To Morrison, now he goes baseline. Layup, reverse left hand. Ricky Morrison getting it going. Tie a little too strong, no, oh, no. If that was gonna rest on the top of the scoreboard, I was gonna say, folks, we've seen everything tonight. Foster, Morrison, Foster, Dolmage, Cumber. Tick, tack, toe. A 40 point lead. La Montagne, D3. Hindle. Turnover. Too strong. Lamontan looking for Miller streaking towards the basket. And for a team who has such a large lead on home court, it's a pretty subdued crowd here right now. They're all looking for that next big moment, it feels like. Oh, Morrison. Nice little move. Fakes out the defender into the lane uncontested. Tie on the iron, go! Foster says, get out of here, imposter. And Case is going to get called on the charge the other way. Thirty-nine point lead. Mountaineers looking to move to five and six on the season. The 
Cougs staring down the barrel of an 0 and 11 start to their season. Case well, uncontested defers to Morrison. Puck in left corner, too strong. One man show the other way and high off glass he goes. Stefan Miller, the six foot guard out of Toronto. Kevon Clark's gonna check back into the game. Dolmage, no one underneath the net on that one. It's as quiet a crowd as I've ever heard here at the D-Bar. Good hustle trying to follow up his own miss was Miller. Morrison, uh, to Foster, to Case. Morrison, Dolmage, Hindle straight away. Too strong, Case, to Hindle again. Morrison, baseline, reverse layup. And you're seeing it in the body language right now, the Cougs. No one contested him on that reverse layup. Three Coug defenders. Woo! Oh my, Jimmy Ty. Pretty one man effort on that play. Back to my point about body language. The body language right now, the Cougs. It just seems like a half-hearted practice right now. Three players had an opportunity to contest that reverse layup. All three deferred and stood and watched. The lead remains at 39. Ty trying to do his part. Gets the three-point play. Fourth in the team in scoring coming into the contest, averaging 8.7 points per game and shooting 34% for the field. Martin, nice little game in his second appearance. Oh, slap, hard contested shot from Dolmage. Kevon Clark going right up to the climax to meet John Dolmage. The follow through a little too strong. Dolmage, well, he had eight points and six rebounds in his last contest for the Mountaineers. A 99 to 82 victory over Conestoga. Looking to move to a perfect 2 0 in 2019. Tong with the put back, the size coming in. Hindle matched up. La Montan has the ball. Crossover on the play. Driving baseline, stepping out of bounds. Not aware of his situation, Stefan Miller. And with 120 left in the third, here is the Mountaineers shot to crack the 100 point barrier. We joked about with the score, scoring system. Hindle is going to miss. As we were talking about how it was kind of a joke to leave the score up at 132 to 24 when they had the malfunction on the scores sheet. Otong's looking for that lob. But they very well could be on their way to that. Sidestep and one. So there you go, folks. Jordan Martin is the one who breaks the 100 point barrier for the Mountaineers scoring. He'll head to the line. He's got 22. He's looking for his 23rd. The Brampton, Ontario native makes it. 102.58. Whoa! 
Jimmy Ty, oh my. I can't look at this with my eyes. A one-man show right now. The floaters, he's hitting the three-pointers, my goodness. This kid can ball. Morrison's gonna inbound. 10 second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Look at the ball movement. Just touch, pass, tic-tac-toe. Hindo with the rebound. Oh, got a little too excited on that one. Clark the other way, two on one with Lamontan. Three on two, my apologies. Dumps it underneath. Skalki, little too excited on that one. Dragged that pivot foot when he caught the ball. With six seconds left, Mountaineers will get the last possession in the third. Martin's gonna wait for Ty, plays a game of bait. Match up with Ty. Too late. And that is the end of three. One, oh, two. 260, folks. Emling Sports and Entertainment bringing you through three quarters of action here at the Debark, and it is all Mountaineers. Mohawk four and six coming into this game at home, four and six on the year, and well, they've had their way from the start of this one. 102 points. I have yet to call a game as a broadcaster where I've seen 100 points at the university or collegiate level. We still got one more quarter to go, by the way, folks. One more quarter. And by the way, the Mountaineers will be back in action tomorrow afternoon at one and at three, the men's and the women's teams, if I'm not mistaken. And once again, Emling Sports and Entertainment will be bringing you that action as well. And the Mountaineer, male Mountaineers, will have a chance to reach 500 for the season. Brian Jonker and his squad, well, they're having quite a nice afternoon. So both sides will be playing in a traditional, we'll call it, back-to-back -back due to the travel. So that's seven and a half hour drive. Well, the Sioux come right back to Debark tomorrow afternoon to do it all again, round two. Here's the stat sheet, folks. Five Mountaineers in double figures. Jordan Martin leads the way, 23 points. Hasn't missed a shot yet to this point. Probably jinxed him, not like they need it at this point anyways. Nine and nine from the field and three rebounds, six assists. Second, Emmanuel Tong, seven of 15 from the field, five rebounds, seeing a third in the scoring. Matt Foster, 17 points off four three-pointers. Milos Mlaj on 12 points. Ricky Morrison with 10. They're shooting 62% in that third quarter, 55% for the game. And well, Jimmy Tai and Jacob Lamontan have combined for 31 of the Sioux's 60 points in this contest. Ty, seven of 15 from the field for a game. Team high, 17 points. And Lamontan, five of 11 from the field, including 66%, four of six from the land beyond for 14 points. They are shooting 42%. When you shoot 42% from the field, that is one heck of a game, as Dolmage is gonna get called on the block. If you're shooting 42% from the field, that is normally a very good day for your team. But we mentioned the size difference, and well, it shows up on the rebounding totals, to say the least. The Mountaineers, 44 rebounds to 16 for the Sioux. They also have 15 rebounds the home side. And the turnover margin, well, both sides have had their fair share of sloppiness. 14 turnovers by the visitors and 10 for the home side. Clark is back at the line. So we've seen this a couple times. They've dropped four back as Aaron Brown, and they've been content to let 
Their one shooter at the free throw line stay there, probably to slow down the transition offense of the Mountaineers. Case to Hindle, left wing three, too strong. Morrison. Hindle waiting for his moment. Back to Case. Is it there? Too strong. I'm sure we'll see a basket at one point. I'm on time. Nice adjustment midair, too strong though. Milo's back in the game. Case stretch out to Morrison. Morrison sizes up, reverse layout, too strong. Hindo was trying to crash off the hand of a Coog. So 104-62. Case, pocket left corner. Milos, too much size. And he'll head back to the line. James Skalke with the foul. Milos hasn't had to play a lot of minutes. 15 points, averaging on the season, shoots 73% for the line, 50% for the field, nine and a half rebounds. It's been a good week for Milos, to say the least. Milos Blanchon doing it on the court here, and Milos Romnich ousting Stan Wawrenka the other night in a thrilling match in the Aussie Open. So. A good week for Canadian Milos, to say the least, or at least the two I know of at this point. A rare turnover. So Miller is going to bring it up court. Got the wristband on that left hand as well as the black headband. Pocket left corner three. Short. Case, the side stepper. Almost fell, gives it to Milos. The lane adjusts, probably unnecessarily. Case gets the rebound, finds Dolmage. Too strong. A little sloppiness right now. It looked like a travel there. A little sloppiness. Morrison with the partial block. Made La Montagne adjust a shot. Three on two. Tick, tack, toe. Ty, matched up with Case. Big screen from La Montagne. Ty, fade away. Too strong on that. Miller. Dolman has it. John Dolmage, now in double figures. 10 points, first three of the night. He is four of eight from the field. Strong, pretty take, Kevon Clark. Hindle, starts up into the lane. Dolmage. Football outlet into the hands of the intercepting defender in case. Bounce pass to Milos, fade away. Okay. Fade away off that right foot, almost behind the backboard when he ended up hoisting that shot. Skalki, bodies Milos, had positioning too strong. It's just too easy. Emmanuel Tong's gonna check back into the game, weighing by the scores table, as is, is Jordan Martin. The two have combined for 43 points to this point in the contest, coming into the third. Ricky. Nice move by Clark on the other side. He loves a little late to the party on that one. Is it the moment? No! Liam Hindle, the basket from the Lambion, and that gets a roar from the crowd. Jimmy Tyne trying to respond on the other end. Milos with the rebound behind the back. 
Case thought Dolmage was cutting to the net on that one. He thought he was taking a high screen for Morrison for the backdoor cut. So Hindle in on the scoring party. Clark to the lane. Just Sam won. Kayvon Clark, strong take. And this man has not backed down at any moment in this game. He is willing to take it to the basket. He's rewarded. Fifty point lead right now for the Mountaineers. Tie behind the back. The Tong tried to strip it. Rowan Real Alfonso unaware. Oh, Tong! Oh! He's been waiting for something like that all night. Manuel Tong will head to the line. Team's leading scorer. Averages nine and a half rebounds a game, shoots 70% from the line, 25 points almost a game. And oh, by the way, he scored 31 in their win over Conestoga. We've seen it all year. This man can be a one man scoring machine. They're getting contributors from all over the court tonight. And if I'm not mistaken, there are only now two players for the Mountaineers that are not on the score sheet in terms of points. Oh, a little Euro step, Emmanuel Otong. About to get fancy, folks. Put on your dance shoes. That is his 30th point of the game, by the way, Emmanuel Otong. Show to the scores table for the updates. They've been keeping it real all night. Hindle. Martin, oh, he's trying to find Otong again. It's just a matter of time, folks. Is it going to happen? Miller to the lane, dump off to Skalki. Otong's got it. Oh, he's waiting for the putback. Morrison! Oh, it's too strong. Ricky Morrison trying to get in on the dunk party. A little too strong on that one. So that will be the fifth foul of the contest for James Scalpel, the 6'8 Hamilton, Ontario product. <laughs> Nothing but net, Emmanuel Otong. for Aaron Brown and Brent Irwin, the coaches of the Cougars. Well, it's gonna be a trying afternoon because they gotta go back at it again in less than 24 hours time. Oh my goodness. Jordan Martin, shake and bake in the fake was taken by the entire defense, and he almost made the debark quake. Ty, matched up with Dolmage. Oh, he's gonna play him on a string here. Okay, Jimmy, Jimmy Ty a little strong on that one. 
Martin. Otong. Travel on the play. You can tell Emmanuel Tong wants that big moment. That might be his last of the game. Matt Foster is going to check back in. Jimmy Tai is nearing a triple double. I'm not sure exactly on the score sheet what it would be right now. Mountaineers, big, big lead. 306 left in this Friday night contest. Okama is going to head back to the line for two. Jeremy Okama, the Timmins Ontario product. Rebound though for the Cougs. Ty Foster. Got him moving. Alfonso right by the scores table. The Mountaineers are going to get it. No look into the corner. Foster too strong. Clark to the lane. Alfonso trying to get the rebound. Matt Foster having a game. Been all over the court all evening. Bossio, nice little hook shot inside. Case way back. Long rebound. Ty's got it. Ty over Case. Front end, Hindle with the rebound. Case smiling and why not? These Mountaineers, a 60, now make that 58 point lead courtesy of the basket from Ty. A glorified scrimmage right now. But not for a moment have these Cougs let up. Oh, nice little no look pass, Hindle to Dolmage. The Cougs might be down on the scoreboard, but I mean, they have not relented at any single point. Oh! Jimmy Ty, oh my. Morrison, what's he doing on the other end? Around the world we go. Back to Dolmage, to Hindle, sidesteps man, Foster, Case. Morrison tried to climb the heavens. It'll be Coog's ball. So, a couple more possessions here at the D-Bar. We'll wrap it up on your Friday evening as both Mountaineer squads will walk away with a home victory and we'll be back at it tomorrow afternoon at one and at three in the friendly confines, at least for tonight, here at the D-Bar. Nice little sty sidestep by Okuma at the end. Hindle's gonna dribble it out.
And that is one of the weirdest ways you'll ever see the end of a game. The shot clock at the scores table was off, and while well, the referees just blew it dead and ended the game manually. So time runs out, and this one was never, ever in doubt, folks. The Mohawk Mountaineers walk away with a 55-point victory over the Sioux College Cougars, and they'll be back at it again tomorrow afternoon at 3 p.m. Ricky Morrison getting in on the action in the late stages. The defense just not there for the Mountaineers to say the least. So a fun and entertaining evening to say the least. Emmanuel Ontong had a game high. I think it was 33 or 36 points at this point. Never found that exclamation point. But a fun and friendly contest, we'll say, to say the least. The Mountaineers walk away with a 55-point victory over the Cougs. They'll be back at it again tomorrow afternoon at 3. You can catch the women's action at 1 o'clock. For Greg Campbell and the rest of the crew, we'll see you in less than 24 hours' time here at the D-Bark on Ebling Sports and Entertainment.